Now it's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to delve deeper into the biggest news stories in the spotlight right now. As we just heard there, U.S. President Joe Biden delivered on Tuesday his first State of the Union address before a joint session of Congress. As was widely expected, he spent the vast majority of the first portion of the speech largely aggressing uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He also revealed the U.S. is closing its airspace to Russian planes. President Biden also spoke about his ongoing concerns over COVID-19, soaring inflation in the U.S., the tax system, and police reform. For more on this, we're joined by Ramon Pacheco Pardo, Professor of International Relations at King's College London. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. So what, about, what did you make of President Biden's first State of the Union speech? I think it was a good speech. Uh, he started talking about Russia and, of course, uh, all Americans and people in other places across the world, uh, they agree that this uh, aggression from Russia uh, should stop. So I think that gave him impetus as he moved along the other issues that he wanted to tackle, foreign policy issues, especially competition with China, uh, but also domestic issues uh, like uh, how to finally overcome the COVID-19 pandemic, the infrastructure bill that he would like uh, Congress to pass. Uh, so I think that overall it was a well-crafted uh, State of the Union address, and I think he tackled the main issues that we expected him to focus on. Now, President Biden's address comes at a time where his approval rating is taking a fair bit of a hit, mostly due to economic issues, there was also the botch withdrawal from Afghanistan and other things. Uh, however, the majority of Americans polled straight after the State of the Union said they generally approved of what Biden had to say. Do you think this will give him some temporary bump in his poll numbers? And do you think that he can get his presidency back on track uh, to save what looks like it could be a rather disastrous midterms for the Democrats in November? I, I think so. I think that uh, he will get a bounce uh, from the address. Uh, when it comes to foreign policy, obviously, the response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, has been widely praised, as opposed to today's issue that you were mentioning, the withdrawal from Afghanistan. And when it comes to domestic politics, now there is a economic growth, a growth in the number of uh, jobs. We are starting to forget uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in many countries, and, and that includes uh, the U.S. Uh, of course, there are negatives. There is a uh, very high inflation, and, and it seems that this will continue all the way to the uh, midterm elections. But uh, when it comes to the elections themselves, the bounce that he will get from the address might not be enough uh, because there seems to be discontent uh, with economic matters uh, among many American voters and also on social issues uh, where there are many voters that feel uh, that his party is too liberal and, and they don't agree with this. But, um, professor, some of Biden's critics would say his speech um, focused on what he actually hopes to do compared to um, the current State of the Union. So in your opinion, what has Biden achieved so far and what has he failed? I, I, I would agree with this criticism. He was really looking forward. He was really talking about what he wants to do, uh, infrastructure, the economy, uh, welfare he was talking about, uh, as well, taxes. And, and I think this may be uh, one of his uh, main failures, that uh, with the Democratic Party controlling uh, both chambers of Congress, he has not been able to pass uh, many of the bills that uh, he hoped would already be in place and that would be helping uh, the American economy. So I think this is a big failure. Now, in terms of success, as uh, you could argue that he's uh, really widely perceived to be a decent person, a decent president. And that was not always the case, as we know, with the previous US president, with President Donald Trump. So, so I think that, that, that that's a positive that may help him uh, as he moves uh, forward. Plus, I think um, once inflation starts to come under control, if you look at other economic figures, uh, growth, uh, jobs, 
they're quite positive. So this could actually help him uh, moving forward as well. And Yuku Dario has been a success uh, over the past year. They're driven uh, in the American economy since the, the deaths really caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, it's really having a tough time getting uh, any legislation through even, like you say, controlling both uh, houses of Congress because it seems like even the Democrats are very polarized between the ultra left wing side of the party and the more traditional uh, Democrat uh, side of things. Um, however, um, what do you think Americans care about the most when it comes to pulling the lever for either one of the parties? Is it still squarely the economy? Because right now Biden has this nightmare of like soaring inflation. They keep saying that they, they might, might be able to get a handle on it, but who knows what will happen there. Soaring oil prices, which Americans are super sensitive to, rising prices at the pump, they don't like that. Do you think that will remain as a number one issue? And we saw a maskless Congress for the first time in quite a long time on uh, Tuesday. Do you think COVID is gradually becoming less and less of an issue in terms of voters in the United States? I, I do think that the economy is going to be a drag as the elections approach, especially now, of course, uh, with the, the, the war uh, or the invasion uh, of, of Ukraine by Russia and the sanctions being imposed by Russia, not only by the U.S., but also by, by, by Europe, Korea, Japan, and other countries, uh, prices uh, of oil are going to go up. Gas prices uh, are going to go up, at the very least in Europe, but this will have a knock-on effect probably at the global uh, level as well. Uh, some food prices, for example, could, could go up uh, because of the food stuff that comes from, 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 from Russia and especially from uh, Ukraine. So it is unlikely that the inflation will be under control over the next uh, six months or even longer. So that's going to be a drag for him. Uh, on the other hand, there might be uh, some goodwill from American voters because uh, as uh, we see in these images, uh, people are taking off their masks. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is becoming a thing of the past in the US as in many other countries uh, across the world or at the very least in, in developed countries. And, and that could actually help him if by then voters haven't forgotten that there was a pandemic uh, and, and they have moved on to, to other issues. But it could be that over the next six months as more restrictions are removed and, and people can go back to a normal life uh, in, in, in the US, they may feel thankful uh, to the president, especially if there is no new variant that brings uh, cases up and therefore the president looks uh, competent in managing the pandemic in a way that the previous president, uh, Donald Trump, was not seen by American voters. All right, Professor. Thank you so much for your insights. Hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you.